Shares in Netflix slightly higher ahead of the company's earnings report that comes out after the bell tonight. Wall Street is expecting earnings of 16 cents a share on revenue of $2.7 billion for their second quarter. Let's bring in Todd Younger from Bernstein Research. He's bullish on the company. And Jeff Reeves of InvestorPlace.com is bearish. All right, guys, welcome to both of you. And Todd, uh, first of all, on the bullish case for Netflix, which is up 30% this year, is this a story about user growth for you still, or like the company's trying to get people to do, or are you focusing more on revenue growth and global operating margins? Uh, it's really all about how compelling do you think this service really is uh, uh, as an offering, and how big is the global opportunity? And you know, we're, we're really just uh, drawn to the fact that we think in five, ten years, we're talking about hundreds of millions, we think, of global subscribers. And uh, if that's right, then that will be a very valuable and defensible business, we think. And the market right now is pricing that enterprise at about $75 billion, which we think is, uh, as the present value of that future thing, is, is still well below what the present value ought to be, um, given how bullish we are on the ultimate prospects. Right. Let me just warn everybody, we may be going to the White House president making some comments about Made in America Week uh, momentarily, so I may rudely have to interrupt you, Jeff Reeves, uh, during your answer here. But let me just say, you, we call you a bear, but you're more concerned about the second quarter earnings seasonally. That's is usually the weakest report for Netflix. So is that why you're bearish, or is there a bigger problem here? Well, two reasons. Number one, I do think that sequentially, you know, there is some concern because they, they said they're going to push forward subscriber growth to this quarter. They can say revenue is more important all they want, but I think Wall Street is going to watch the subscriber numbers. In, in bigger picture, while I do agree with the, the global market opportunity of streaming video, like a, a colleague of mine, Dave McKeon from our Virginia office, we were talking about the difference between scale and dominance. Like Walmart has scale, but it doesn't have dominance. And, and Netflix is the one fang component that I think doesn't have that that kind of cachet that all the others do, the Googles, the Facebooks of the world that are virtual monopolies out there. Netflix is really going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Amazon. Hulu got an Emmy yeah. nomination for The Handmaid's Tale. Who knows what else will come out of the woodwork? So I agree in the global market opportunity there, but like, I, you know, like the other guest was saying, a lot of that success is priced in, and I think we have to take competition a little more seriously than Wall Street is right now. It is not Apple when, if you remember a couple years ago, Apple was making 103% of all smartphone profits. That's not how Netflix yep. is doing it. It's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with its competitors. So it, I, I see the opportunity, but I also see the okay. concern that investors should have for the, from the competition perspective. Todd, I just want to let you respond to all that briefly. <laughs> sure. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, I might say that one, we question whether the, some of those services that were just named are actually competitors or whether they're actually doing more to help grow the category of subscription video on demand, which is how we see it. Listen, Amazon Prime Video is a great service. You know, Hulu uh, has uh, a lot of appeal as well. Um, we actually think that those services are helping move people, uh, viewers, into that mode of how they consume content, which we think for most viewers, for most viewing occasions, is a much better mode. And so it's not so much competing with Netflix if you're not stealing subscribers from Netflix. Uh, we think they're actually growing the category.